Welcome to another Jabba's Palace Roll Call. Today's character, Ula. In Return of the Jedi itself, we don't learn a lot about Jabba the Hutt's Twi'lek dancer, Ula. She's tied to Jabba's throne when we first see her. She dances during the Rebo Band's performance, but when Jabba attempts to draw her closer to him for some hut snuggling, she refuses. Enraged, Jabba presses the button for the trapdoor in front of his throne, sending her down into the Rancor Pit. In the original cut of the film, the last we saw of her was when she disappeared into the pit, but for the special edition of the film that Lucas made in 1997, they actually got Femi Taylor to reprise the role she played 14 years earlier, to add a scene showing Ula's reaction in the pit. This is one of the few changes to the film that I don't really mind, because it lets us see a little bit more of the character, and it seems appropriate. The less said about the other changes to this scene, the better, although there is one more change that probably bears mentioning. As many adolescent boys are probably aware, Ula famously experienced a bit of a wardrobe malfunction right around here. Some claim that the scene has been digitally altered to remove some exposed nippleage, but I'm not sure that's really true. I think you could argue that the added scene in the pit is actually more revealing, but uh, let's move on, shall we? We get to know a lot more about Ula in Tales from Jabba's Palace, a collection of short stories published in 1995. A Time to Mourn, A Time to Dance, Ula's Tale, by Kathy Tyers, covers Ula's backstory, and it actually makes her even more of a tragic character. In the story, we learn that Ula and another Twi'lek girl named Sien were kidnapped by Bib Fortuna, who had them trained as dancers for the purpose of presenting them to Jabba. When they arrived on Tatooine, they met Luke Skywalker, who attempted to rescue them. He managed to convince Sien to come with him, but Ula was suspicious of the stranger and had been told of the easy life she would enjoy as part of Jabba's court, and so she refused to go. It was a decision that she would later come to deeply regret. She was dismayed to learn the truth about Jabba and his palace and suffered beatings from the Gamorrean guards there. According to the story, the Ula we see in the film had only been at the palace for a couple of days, which helps to explain her mindset and why she refused to submit to Jabba's advances. Her fate in the Rancor Pit was almost a relief compared to what she had endured at the palace. I have to wonder why the people who are so upset at Leia's treatment in the film never seem to mention Ula at all. Sure, seeing a strong character like Leia being put into this position is jarring, but Ula was treated much worse than Leia ever was. She was kidnapped from her family, forced into slavery, beaten, and then horribly killed. That's pretty dark stuff, folks. There was very little in the way of Ula merchandise for quite a long time. The first item I know of was a figure included in the plastic Jabba the Hutt throne room action scene released by MPC in 1983. The set included a lot of the more obscure aliens from the palace, but her figure is almost comically small. In 1989, West End Games released a set of metal miniatures for use with their Star Wars role-playing game, and it also included an Ula figure. It's bigger and better detailed than the previous figure, but still not fantastic. D'Agostini made a series of Star Wars magazines that each came with a painted metal figure, including one that featured Ula. While the magazines were short and only part of them actually had anything to do with the character on the cover, you still get a good overview of Ula. The figure itself is not bad, especially for its relatively small size. As with Slave Leia, there was initially a certain reluctance to come out with toys for the Eula character. Maybe they thought parents wouldn't approve of a scantily clad dancing girl, or that boys just wouldn't be interested in her. There was no vintage action figure made, and the first Eula figure wasn't made until 1998, and even then it was only available as a mail-away offer with the salacious chroma figure. It's not a bad figure, although it has very limited articulation. I'm also not sure why they went with this yellowish color. They also sold a version of this figure at Toy Expo 1998. It was identical to the retail version, with the exception of a flap that was added to the box, with Femi Taylor's picture and autograph on it. The only other Ula figure made was included in the Walmart-exclusive Jabba's Throne set from 2010. This one has much better articulation, but is unfortunately wearing this very baggy netting that doesn't look much like what was in the film. As you can see with this prototype figure, it's actually a very impressive sculpt. This is a custom Lego Ula figure that was available from a website selling custom Lego parts. At the time, Lego hadn't come out with their own version of the character, but in 2012 they did release an Ula with their Jabba's Palace set. I think you could argue that this really shows how attitudes toward the character have changed in the last 30 years. 
she has two faces, happy and dismayed. And if you add the optional Rancor pit set, you can actually send her through the trap doors to the waiting jaws of the Rancor. But it wasn't until 2006 that there was a high-end collectible produced for Ula, the one-fifth scale statue by the French company Atticus. This remains my favorite Ula collectible, and it's also the largest at around 13 inches from head to toe. In fact, I would call this the ultimate Ula collectible, at least for the moment. But this mini-bust, released by Gentle Giant in 2010, is also quite good. I think I may actually prefer the small statue that came with the Gentle Giant Jabba statue, though. It seems to capture her emotional state perfectly. Now, there are some more obscure items that I could cover, like this Pepsi bottle cap from Japan, or this unlicensed statue, or even one-of-a-kind items, like this custom Mighty Mug figure I made, or this wooden figure by the artist John Sukup, but we have to draw the line somewhere. I should mention something about the only Ula product that I know of that is set to be released in the near future, though, which is the Funko Pop figure in this three-pack with Luke and the Rancor. It should be available later in 2016. It does sort of make me think about Jabba and Bib Fortuna in a different light when I think about how Ula was treated. But then again, they're supposed to be villains, so it only makes sense that they'd do some terrible things. It's not as though the film is glorifying what they did, so I don't agree with the idea that we shouldn't have merchandise based on the character. Here are a couple other videos in my Jabba's Palace Roll Call series. Let me know in the comments if you have any requests for other characters that you'd like to have me do. And as always, thanks very much for watching.